what's up everyone welcome back to another episode of the venom vlog and today we're going to talk about midnight suns uh, just the venom stuff in midnight suns but i will still give some of my impressions and thoughts on the game i have not completed the game yet i haven't beaten it and the new dlc had just come out and i played a little bit of that so that's kind of where i'm at in the game right now and i was a little disappointed in the dlc because what they were advertising was hey you're going to get deadpool and storm and morbius and venom and it turns out you're going to get one character at a time and they started with Deadpool. So I guess that kind of makes sense because they were marketing him more than the other characters. So I guess we're going to have to just wait a little bit more time before we can actually play as Venom in the game. Because that's what I was hoping to show you today. But I do have a lot of Venom stuff to talk about from this game that I'll share with you. So first, my initial impressions of the game or what I think of it so far now that I'm like 30, almost 30 hours or so into the game. Um, is that I overall enjoy the game, but there's two sides of the game. There's the combat and then there's everything else at the Abbey. And the Abbey is kind of like your headquarters or hub, and that's where you play most of the game, actually, which I find kind of frustrating. Not that there isn't some interesting stuff going on at the Abbey, but, you know, you're mainly just, it's an open world area, so you're kind of running around, talking to characters, building up your friendships with them, and all that stuff. And some of the dialogue is kind of cringe and bad, and some of the scenarios they put you in are kind of weird and Sometimes they'll say like, hey, say this, and you'll you'll click that, but they meant it in a different context, but since they only gave you a fraction of the sentence, it turns out the character was like more of a D-bag than you wanted him to be, um, you know, based on the sentence, or uh, you, you were like, oh, this seems positive, and you click on it to be positive, and it's not that positive, and you lose friendship points. Uh, so so it's I, I, there's a method to it in a way where it's like, all right, some characters they don't want to be pandered to and talked, you know, uh, handled with kid gloves. So I can understand like that's kind of the reasoning for it, but there's just so much of it. I think there's like 75% of the game probably is spent at the Abbey. Like when you start the game, let's say it's all right, it's a new day. I'm coming in, I'm picking up where I left off yesterday. And so you start a new day, you go to bed, you know, and make the night pass. It's daytime now. So you wake up, you go to the training area and you talk to Blade and, and upgrade some training stuff. You go to the forge and you talk to Stephen Strange and Iron Man and upgrade some stuff there. Then you go to Carol and you send some characters on side quests. Maybe you run around the Abbey for a little bit to try to solve some one of the mysteries, one of the many mysteries that are at the Abbey. Or you uh, do a challenge of the gods and unlock a new power so you can find new areas at the Abbey. And then you go do a mission. And then after that, you can maybe come back home and talk to a couple people or join a hangout or go to book club or one of the night events. And then that's it. And it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. And you notice I mentioned like eight things there, nine things that you do during a daytime in the game or like the span of 24 hours in the game. And only one thing that I mentioned was battle related. And that's it. You go and choose your battle. And sometimes the battle you want to fight or jump into, you can't unlock yet because you have to do a side battle first. So, you know, that's great because you get to level up your characters and all and everything. So you're ready for the next big story mission battle. Uh, but still, it's just like, it, it's just kind of that routine. And as much as I like routine and going through those motions over and over and over to an extent, um, I will say it gets boring because I already solved all the Abbey stuff. And I'm only maybe just over halfway through the game. And all the Abbey stuff, I think I just finished. I just found the the hound, the hellhound that we were looking for that was like a mystery. And I think that was one of the last ones. Or there was like a body I found. Uh, there was like a grave that was dug up. And I had to solve that. And that's pretty much it. I got all four of the powers that you unlock at the Abbey. So, I don't know. That's just kind of my thoughts on the, the game in general. Is that I'm kind of like, I love the battle stuff. And I like the Abbey stuff. But if there was a little less Abbey stuff, it would feel more vital. Um, and, and you know, married together uh, better with the battle stuff and balance better. And so because it's overdone, the Abbey stuff, I'm not a big fan of that. Like, And that's probably my biggest criticism of the game, minus the various glitches and sound drops and audio drops that I experience or characters teleporting to another spot or, you know, whatever. There's a lot of that going on too, still some bugs in the game, but nothing that has hindered my experience other than a couple times the game will just shut off. And I ha that happened with Gotham Knights too, where I'll get to a point, I'll, I'll save, or I'll, I haven't got to a save yet, like because um, I think you have to go to sleep to like auto-save. Uh, but I'll get there, like I'm running into the room, and then it brings me back to the home menu on Xbox. And like I said, I had that problem with uh, Gotham Knights as well, so I don't, I don't know if that's just a thing with modern games, um, or if it's an Xbox problem, I have no idea. But uh, that only happened maybe three or four times, so not the end of the world. And luckily, all the times that I've reloaded the game, 
I didn't have to replay that much. So the auto saves seem pretty frequent and stuff. And I, I switched to manual saves for a while there too. After the, the second time it happened, I was like, all right, we're manually saving now uh, whenever I want to. So, um, but yeah, overall fun game. Now let's get to the Venom stuff. All right. So Venom in this game, for those of you who are hardcore Venom fans like me, you probably might not like this version of Venom. He's pretty much been possessed by Lilith off screen. So we don't even know how he got possessed by Lilith. We just know that at some point Lilith got control of Venom and turned him into one of her acolytes, uh, basically. And so she has four. She kind of has like a four horseman thing going. Uh, she's corrupted. Um, well, I don't want to say because one of them's a spoiler. So I won't say one of them. But we have Scarlet Witch, Sabretooth, and Venom are the first three. And there is a fourth one. And it's kind of a cool twist. So I don't want to reveal that. Um, but now she's, you know, unloading her evil across the world. Demons are coming out of hell and everything. And you have her acolytes that are enforcing that. And one of them is Venom. And he uses his symbiote now that he's possessed with demon powers. Um, they do make knowledge that the symbiote is unique and that uh, d demonic powers work uniquely against Venom or with Venom as well. Because remember in the comic books, the penance there from Ghost Rider did nothing to Venom. And so that sometimes happened. And the Hellfire of, uh, you know, doesn't really hurt Venom too, too much either. Um, and then obviously you had Andy later on who had the Hell Mark. So they kind of reference in this that, that symbiotes, because they're off-world creatures, they're unpredictable to the magic that uh, Lilith is wielding. And so Lilith uses Venom, though, turning him into a demonic Venom with horns and everything, and has him create a barrier with the symbiote, because only the symbiote, since it's an off-world creature, no magic that Doctor Strange knows or that Lilith knows and stuff can really disrupt the symbiote that much. So the symbiote grows underneath the Sanctum Sanctorum and completely encompasses it and breaks through all the protective wards. And that allows Lilith to grab uh, Scarlet Witch and turn her to evil. And so the symbiote is a major part in Lilith's plan. So I did kind of like that, but Venom himself is just a mindless monster. Um, you fight him in your first battle against him and you, you, know, you get your team up and you go against him um, and he's like chucking cars at you and you're fighting him in the streets of New York, uh, which is cool because I think there's like a Conchu Moon Knight reference in the background at one point, which is really awesome. And then, um, and then you know, he goes away for a while and you go back to the Abbey, you get Spider-Man on your team and he actually almost died saving you. So you bring him back and you're like, all right, let's bring him to the Abbey and you talk to Spider-Man. And what's cool is there's some twist with Spider-Man in this. Like he's like, hey, I'm not a team player. I've been around since I was a kid, maybe about 10 years now um, in the timeline of this world. And he's like, and, uh, and I've never been really on a team. And so the Hunter, the character you play as, who you can completely design yourself, you can make a man, woman, however you want him to look. And so uh, the Hunter is like, hey, uh, you, you saved my life. Come back to the Abbey with us. And then you have a talk with him and Ghost Rider and they talk about you know, secret identities and stuff. And Ghost Rider says, you know, I, I keep my identity a secret because I'm, you know, a demon from hell. And he goes, so I don't think people would like that very much. I have a lot of religious people outside my house is screaming at us. And I don't want to put my little brother through that, my brother Gabe. So he said, so I do do that for protection. And Spider-Man's like, yeah, I kind of do stuff for protection too. He goes, but here at the Abbey, I trust all of you guys. Ghost Rider's like, I want all of you to know that I'm Robbie. And, uh, and so, you know, Spider-Man kind of likes that and says, all right, so he actually goes and takes his mask off and reveals himself to the whole team. And he says, all right, I, I trust you guys too. After a couple of missions with you, I trust you. And he goes, and so uh, when I'm here at the Abbey, I'll be Peter Parker. <laughs> Much to the dismay of a lot of people because like Blade finds him annoying and you know, everyone just kind of finds him a little bit annoying, but he does make friends with Robbie and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. There's some cool Spider-Man stuff. But what I like the most about Venom in this comes from Spider-Man. In between missions, because you have the first mission where you fight Venom, then sometimes Venom will show up in a random encounter. If you go do a side quest that's marked normal or hard, he'll show up sometimes and you'll have to fight him there, which is pretty cool because it's just unexpected and you get another Venom appearance. Uh, but then there's a time where you bring your characters down to the sewers under the Sanctum Sanctorum and you fight them down there and you try to break through the, the symbiote tentacles that are wrapping around the Sanctum. And then once you do that, you get into another battle with him and bring him into the church that Spider-Man brought him into the first time and you beat him there and drop a church bell on him and stuff. And you have to like ring the church bells to weaken him as you fight him and stuff. Uh, so it's really cool. And it was a very long battle, uh, but I loved it. I loved every second of it. Uh, but then back at the Abbey in between battles, you have Spider-Man talking about Eddie. And he's like, look, I, I want to save him. He's not a bad guy. He hates me, but I, I, I understand why he blames me for, um, you know, I inadvertently ruined his career by exposing a supervillain and he was, you know, on the case as a journalist. And it turns out the person he was talking to wasn't the real killer. And I caught the real killer and that inadvertently ruined his career. 
And from that, he developed a hatred towards me. And then the symbiote I used to have, and I rejected it. So it shared a hatred for me, like Eddie did, or with Eddie. And that's why they're after me. He goes, but Eddie doesn't like to put innocence in harm's way. And everything Lilith is making him do, he's going to regret. And he goes, so after they defeat Venom, he's like, I want to try to go back to the rubble and try to save him. And they're like, are you kidding? Like, he's gone. He's, you know, he's possessed. You know, even if you unbury him, he's probably still under Lilith's control. And Spider-Man's like, but then we need to figure out how to get Lilith's control off of him. And it's really neat. Like, Spider-Man's compassion for Eddie in this is really strong. And I really like that they did that. Like, Spider-Man comes across at times to the others as naive. Like, Blade's like, you know, hey, I kill everything I hunt. And Spider-Man's like, yeah, but Eddie's Eddie. He's a human. And I don't want him hurt, you know. And I, I don't want to be responsible for another, uh, you know, awful thing in his life, you know, I don't, or, or his death. I don't want to be responsible for that either. So please, like, you know, help me save him. So because of that, I, I found the the take on Eddie more heartbreaking because I'm like, okay, he's just a dumb villain in this. He just says, you know, I'll eat your brains, just standard stuff. Um, and, and that's fun. They squeeze that in there. It's classic venom, but I know a lot of us like the evolved venom that we've, you know, gotten used to over the years and the new, you know, stories they've told with Eddie over the years. And this does have that, but through Peter. And that's what I kind of liked. I'm glad that they put that in there in some capacity. So that way you feel something. And that, I guess later on when we get venom in the DLC, that all that setup of like let's give Eddie a second chance that's probably going to play out more when that DLC comes out so I'm very much looking forward to that all right so those are my overall thoughts on Midnight Suns the Venom stuff and I showed hopefully some cool footage there from my gameplay uh, of it and I will be posting my entire playthrough of the game over on my gaming channel with no commentary um, I just decided you know what let's just get the raw footage out there for people who want to just check out this game without me talking over it but a after I post a couple videos I'll definitely review some of the Midnight Suns comic books on the gaming channel too. And I'll also over there uh, do an actual review of the game in general, like once I complete it and everything and all the DLCs are out. But just the raw footage, I think it's just better if you just go check it out yourself and come up with your own opinions. And then you can wait for my full review after all the DLCs come out and after I beat the game. So that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching the show. As always, I have more Venom vlog content coming up. We're going to be doing another prelude to dark web even though dark web is pretty much almost over now i think it ends in a week or two um so i'll have another prelude video about ben riley coming up uh, very soon um, i'll have some shorts coming up about the the new symbiote rascal uh, which is funny because it's ace's original name before i renamed him ace uh, when i adopted him and rescued him he is his name was rascal so there's a new symbiote coming out called rascal uh, for red goblin and then there's also the venom verse is returning uh, so and that was obviously timed pretty well because i did a venom verse video a day or two before they officially announced it uh, because i was anticipating that news and so i'm very happy that they're getting into the Venomverse stuff and that they're going to be ending it too, but it'll give us a lot of content this summer, right around the time of Summer of Symbiotes, which will be another big thing with, um, you know, with that whole storyline going on. And there's some Carnage stuff and Deadpool stuff coming up as well that we'll get into for sure. Um, and then also the Dark Web story itself, I will do really quick reviews of those. I'll probably bunch the uh, issues together so it won't be like I was. I was going to do each individual issue and rake up the episodes, but I think I might pair them and do like two or three per episode but we'll start getting into those and then in like a couple weeks or a month or so i'll probably do a shared conversation i'll have a guest on and we're going to break down what we thought of dark web in a little bit more detail and then you'll get someone else's opinion besides mine as well so a lot of cool venom vlog stuff coming up i promise um and <laughs> as ace is snoring he still has his cone on uh, so he's a little miserable right now um but we're uh, we're going to be getting it off at any time now so yeah, so while he's been resting, I've been playing this game and I've been having a lot of fun. So I'll have more content from Midnight Suns on the gaming channel. And then when the DLC comes out, I'll have another Venom vlog episode here for you to let you know what I think of the DLC for Midnight Suns with Venom. Thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.